Well, hello everyone and welcome back to a brand new series here on the channel where we are going to create a tropical paradise. Uh, the town name I've decided is going to be Paradiso and I'm going to go with the terrain type of sand lakes. Obviously we can't make an ocean beach so the sand, you know, hopefully it'll give us a large lake. Uh, we're going to go terrain size medium but uh, hopefully we can, you know, play a while on it and fill the majority of the map. I don't like to use large when I'm recording just because uh, it puts extra strain on my system while the recording software is running as well. So medium seems right here. Now for climate, I'm going to go with tropical, obviously. And then for starting conditions, if you haven't played uh, Colonial Charter for a while, remember that there's a whole bunch of starting conditions here. Now, even within shipwreck, which instead of having the starting cart, we'll have a start. We'll have a ship. Uh, there's there's the regular hard. Then there's El Dorado, jungle, northern pines, medium plus El Dorado, medium plus jungle, medium plus northern pines. So you can kind of it's not they're not really biomes, but it's kind of feels that way. So we're gonna go El Dorado, right? Think about these people as being explorers or voyagers of some kind, and uh, we definitely want hard start. We'll see what we can do. Uh, if we fail at the beginning, then we'll have to start all over. But I think we should be okay. Um, I just like to kind of flip the map seat until I see something that strikes me as what we should go with. And um, that looks good. Boom. All right. So while this is generating, I just wanted to say thank you, everybody for the support on the last series that we finished up the greenhouse challenge uh, so now you know we're kind of shifting maybe back in time by using the colonial charter but my challenge for this is of course to oh there's our ship <laughs> that's an odd place for the ship to crash i kind of wish that it would let me move that even if it just was like right here we could have our suspension of disbelief that this was like the coastline, but I do like the sand. I think that's going to work for us. And I like the uh, tropical trees. So it feels right. It feels good. Uh, let's go ahead and get our, our tools pulled up here. Uh, hopefully you guys are excited to see how this plays out. Like I am, I definitely enjoy enjoy a brand new playthrough and see what story unfolds so we'll take a quick look at the map here one of these days i'm gonna make myself play a game where i don't pause it at the beginning and look around and i just make myself go for it uh but i think we want to pretty much um start clearing this way so we can get some fishing in down here fish would be huge in any tropical colonial tropical settlement so uh, maybe we can do a uh, hunter gather, you know, gathering kind of thing up here, and we'll put in our first forester. So we'll use some of the new foresters, some of the tropical fruits that we don't normally do when we're doing our other playthroughs. So this is gonna be like a cart, so it's gonna house our our basics in that way. So oh yeah yeah, I forgot colonial charter. Everything's a little bit different. So we'll go ahead and put in a standard stockpile so we can start putting our our uh, wood and stone there. And we will put in, oh gosh, I'm going to have to have like, I'm going to have to be reminded of where everything is. So we want a basic gatherer's hut. We'll put them, we want to stay on this side of the creek. Uh... Let's go right there with the gatherer's hut. Uh, there's no uh, prohibition against having hunting, right? This is just pretty standard playthrough in that regard. And then we want to... Uh, see, I don't want to send my people too far up there, but we do want to clear out a good bit of trees so that we can put in the new forester... So not this, yeah, new trees. No, not that. Palm trees? I mean, we could. No, what I... Help me out here, game. I want... Maybe they're under food? Mm. 
you guys know what I'm talking about. I want the the planters that are the force. Yeah, they should be. No. What about the fruit plant? Uh, where's the one that says foresters? Here we go. All the way at the end. So apple, apricot, kind of tropical, chestnut, coffee. I want like the ones that are really obviously tropical fruits. Olives could count. Okay, orange. Maybe we'll do an orange first. Wild things. Used to define an area to selectively cut down trees and plant new seedlings. Exclusively plants trees used in the, all the wild things map. Okay, uh, so we don't have like bananas. They grow on trees, right? They're on palm trees. Interesting. And I thought, wasn't there lemons and limes? Well, that's kind of disappointing. I was like really sort of counting on those to be part of what makes our place feel so tropical. Hmm. Well, I guess oranges will have to be it for now. And let's go ahead and mark the stone to be gathered. And some of the iron, not all of it. Let's get this other stone here. And because of the radius of the gathering hut, I guess it's okay to put a few houses here. In terms of housing, there's a ton of different stuff you can do in Colonial Charter. Uh, the majority of what we use is going to be these rustic abodes. They have an upgrade path. Oh, I don't... I shouldn't have done those sideways, but here we are. Um, so we're going to put in... We probably need... Six should be fine. All right. So I think we're ready to get going here, I think. So hopefully they'll start cutting down trees and getting these houses built, the first three places of employment and the houses. And then we also are going to need to collect wild foods. An important tool, regardless of what conditions you're starting on and all of that. Uh, with a hard start, the thing that makes it challenging is that you have the ratio of people to supplies and storage is, is really difficult. Which is why we're going to get, hopefully, a gatherer's hut going absolutely first. Uh, because they can start bringing in these wild foods. We'll probably put two people in there and one person hunting and then it's just about as soon as we can we're probably gonna put a, a fishing person down here probably build a road down and we can start putting uh, housing and supplies along the road this pack i believe has like a some type of scavenger this thing here this water scavenger for oysters mussels crayfish and seaweed I think I might try one of these right over here uh, hopefully that will get us some supplies another thing that I like in colonial charter is that you can do reeds and feathers for okay here we go for coats so you can kind of get a jump start on your on your clothing by making those survival coats. All right. So the orn the uh, hunting cabin. Okay, great. It's about to go up. Our food is holding steady at eleven twenty-five. I know this is, uh, you know, kind of touch and go at the beginning. See, why was that person all the way down here? I didn't tell them to do anything down there. Is that a child? 
Sometimes it's a child when they are wandering. Yeah, he's only six. Nathan E, don't die, okay? We should, all right, perfect. I'm gonna go ahead and pull that total down just so we can tweak that later if we need to. Uh, the forester, we probably want this water scavenger built before the forester. Maybe we go ahead and pause this so that they do the water scavenger first. Cause we're really gonna want to have food coming in like immediately. see if they have started gathering anything yet yeah see they're already they've already brought in almost 200 food and we just kind of did that so that's good uh, now eventually we'll want a road to expedite moving the materials but I'm not gonna worry about that and what kind of roads are we gonna do since it's already sand I don't know I guess a dirt road is fine for right now. Okay. Whoa, that's super hard to see. All right, we might do one of the other ones. Uh, there they are, putting in the road. It does help with speed, though. I mean, this part doesn't really matter because there's nothing here, but. Uh, you know, I in my mind, when I was going to set up this save, I was like, oh, I'll, I'll come up with lore. I'll come up with a story about how these people got here. And, and that'll make it more interesting. And and now that, you know, I actually fired it up, I'm just playing the game. <laughs> the lore didn't, uh, didn't really stick. I just get too excited about the actual playing of the game. And, it, and it, I don't do the stories in the way that I maybe initially thought I would but that's okay so eventually we'll get this iron out of here and this forester is gonna be planting orange trees here so we're gonna have a really nice you know northeast corner of our settlement is gonna be a beautiful huge orange grove uh, that hopefully will will provide both fruit as well as wood um, I think while I'm kind of waiting for this, I don't really want to zoom ahead. I just want to kind of wait and let it build. And while I do that, I'm going to take a look at these other ones. I know we were just doing this. So in a tropical paradise, would we want to have bamboo? Question mark. I mean, I guess it depends where tropical we're talking about. If we're talking about Latin America, then I don't think they have bamboo. But if we're talking about Asia, they certainly have bamboo. So that's something I don't, I don't, I would guess it just converts it to wood, right, in this game. I don't think you use bamboo specifically, but that would be cool to have a jungle playthrough and do a bamboo forester. Maybe we can put that on our list of future things to do. Uh, but of the fruits, we have apples. I think apricots are more Mediterranean than tropical, but I don't think apricots would be outside of the realm of possibility for us. Cherries, maybe not. Chestnuts, no. Coffee, yes, at some point, but we might do coffee, like, plantation. We'll see. Figs, again, Mediterranean, but maybe. Grapes, that could work. Maple, no. Mulberry, no. Olives, maybe. Oranges, yes. Peaches, potentially. Pears, probably not. Pecans, no. Plums, no. Quince, probably not. Walnut, maybe. Might mulberry, maybe. So that is a little bit frustrating because uh, part of what I wanted to do was was leverage several of those. So that's a little bit sad, but um, we have a lot of different things that we can do otherwise uh, that will hopefully feel feel kind of tropical and we'll you know get some plantations going, for example, uh, and, and some cash crops to trade away. That should be fun. I once had a, a comment on, on Reddit about doing a colonial playthrough and, and using the plantations and, you know, somebody made a comment. Uh, for the record, 
we have this is a fictional world and i'm not in any way shape or form trying to dramatize or romanticize forced labor that's not what i mean by plantation um, it's literally what they call the fields in this game um, if you go to the tools right here is a crop field this one is a crop field and this one is called a plantation. These are non-food crops such as cotton, flax, and tobacco grown in this field. So it's it's literally just a just a semantics thing to keep the two different crops for food versus crops for like textiles and production separate. So please don't don't read me using that word into trying to uh, romanticize something that was an important part of, of our shared past. Alrighty, this is strange. Look, if you look down here in the corner, we are, I know it's only the end of the first, coming up on the end of the first year, but we literally have no events. I, I don't know if that's normal, but, but it's kind of tripping me out. I don't think I've seen that in the past. That's pretty good. Alright, so of course we need our vital services which I always forget where they are in this one, but I'm, I guess we'll go with the base game, Taylor, for now. Um, yeah, maybe we put these industrial style buildings this way. It feels weird to build too close to the shipwreck. I don't know why. Just So we'll put the Taylor there, and we're going to need tool making blacksmith we will put here and we're gonna need oh um, can we do a, a lumber mill I don't want a lumber yard almost as fast per worker as a regular sawmill but only allows up to two it's a hundred and ten wood for this sawmill it allows up to three cutters to work very fast work speed We'll use up available wood logs quickly. Wow, that is huge. Okay, look. I think we want to... Well, that feels pretty tropical. That, let's go with this mo model. Wow. What, what if I do the water wheel sawmill? Will that work out here? Oh. Yeah, I think we do this. Does this feel tropical, fam? That's the question. Does this? I mean, they would have had, they would have had water wheels in the tropics. There's no reason not to. Yeah, let's do it. Okay. So we already have the early trappings of industry here. Here. Okay. Uh, rain. Every time I go to take a screenshot, it rains. It's like rain on your wedding day, but it's rain on your uh, um, banished parade. Ready? Three, two, one, and beautiful. Look at that. Look at that detail. I mean, for this game being as old as it is, this is very impressive. Okay, we should start getting some oranges in. Oh, look at this. Just start getting some food over here. Let's go ahead and mark some more gathering. One of the reasons why I'm not marking gathering up here is that we already have a gatherer doing that, but we need to grab everything we can. Let's check out our food that's on hand. Food on hand, we have blueberries, bone meal, herbs. Potatoes still from the, from the shipwreck, onions, mushrooms, roots, and lots of venison. Nice. Well, eventually, I believe, we can put in a butcher and start making venison steaks. I believe that's a thing that we can do here. Boom. Deer butcher. Used to chop venison into different kinds of meat and products. So uh, we will certainly be taking advantage, especially as we get huge as the settlement grows you know we'll come over to this larger land mass over here and, and make for an obnoxious large downtown i would imagine at some point um, 
and or maybe we go this way too i don't know who knows but when we when we do all that we will certainly need advanced food production uh, i know that's something that some players are very passionate about and so i'll i'll do my best to make sure we do that we need our we need all these buildings to be built to be honest um, the lack of firewood is is a little bit disconcerting and so I think I'm going to pause the tailor and the blacksmith so that they will work more on the sawmill. Uh, are we going to start seeing orange trees? There we go. See, this is an orange tree sapling that's been planted by this forester. So within the circle here, they're going to be chopping down these other trees and planting new little little orange trees. So it will be a, a little while, but they'll get full grown. And then this gatherer's hut will gather those oranges. So that should be really good. That should be a nice baseline. And we can put in other gatherer's huts in other places to get the, the, the regular things that the map comes with. But... If you look here, seeds, onions, ginger, blueberries, roots, and mushrooms, those are much more like standard things. So I would love to have as much of our diet and baseline be tropical as I can as I can get. What are you saying you're full of? Logs? <laughs> That's funny. How about how about three thousand? You can quit when you're at three thousand. So uh, we're getting pretty much near the end of our time, so let me just double check here. What I was thinking is maybe we use the dock set. Um, the last playthrough, I wasn't allowing myself to use some of this stuff, but I was thinking maybe we use the dock set to put in uh, some things like the reed farm, the rice planter, you know, when, once we get down here and, and, and put a fishing thing in, uh, fishing dock, we, we could always do some of these other, other things to help supplant our food. But I will say, I think on this one, you can't just build a rice planter. You have to have rice as a starter. It won't let you build it. So you either have to trade for rice or have rice as a as a planted crop which is makes sense but is also a little bit frustrating if you don't have rice on hand uh, but certainly i would say a lot of tropical places can, can and do grow rice so rice and corn would be great as staples of our economy maybe we can get uh, or of our of our diets so if we can get a trader, maybe we could put a trader over here, have fishing and, and food down here, and put a trader over there. Fairly close, like if this is our industry area, we can have a trader over here so they can bring their, their trade goods down. We don't. I don't want to do, I don't know where I want to put most of the housing. I'm going to guess at some point I'll build a bridge over to here and we'll put like a market and a huge downtown that just feels like uh, off of gut instinct that feels like what we'll probably do but i don't know for sure all right let's get some firewood going first and then we can worry about lumber for more advanced buildings down the road i think this feels like a natural stopping point we got our main buildings built uh our population is going to be our bottleneck here for a little while let's see we need tools more than clothes so let's do that one so hopefully when we come back in the next episode, we can get this uh, blacksmith going and get uh, make sure we avert a tool crisis. Food has stayed stable, which is obviously my initial concerns are always food and then housing. So we've got those under control in this first, first year. And uh, hopefully onward and upward from here. Thanks so much for watching. My name is Blue Valley. I play simulation games, including Banished. Bye for now.